Welcome to Discovering the Jewish Jesus. I'm your host, Dustin Roberts, and for the next 25 minutes, Rabbi Schneider is going to be talking about how you can increase in God's love. A lot of people struggle with feeling unloved, yet at the same time, they have trouble understanding that in order to receive love, they have to be connected to the ultimate source of love, God the Father. And that's why Rabbi Schneider wants to address the topic of learning how to love one another well in today's lesson. Rabbi's message comes from our series on biblical benedictions, and we'll be looking primarily at the book of 1 Thessalonians. So let's get started. Here is Rabbi. A benediction is a declaration of blessing. And as we're studying these biblical benedictions, what it does, beloved ones, is refresh us in the love of God that's been poured over our lives. I'm telling you, I'm preaching myself happy. I love focusing on God's goodness. We're gonna pick up today on a brand new one. We're going to the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter number three, verses 11 through 13. I'm gonna read just one verse at a time, pulling out key concepts from the verse that I wanna make application to our life from. I'm positive this will encourage your heart as you open yourself up to the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Here we go. Now, may our God and Father himself and Jesus our Lord direct our way to you and may the Lord cause you to increase and abound in love for one another and for all the people just as we also do for you. Now, I'm going to start back at the beginning of those two verses that I just read. I want to point out, Paul here was asking that the Lord would direct his path towards these saints in Thessalonica. So I'm going to kind of take that concept of Paul asking the Lord to direct him and make a personal application about that for you and I. So If you think about what Paul was asking the Lord for, may the Lord direct our way to you. What that tells me is that we can ask God to direct our way. There are so many different decisions and pathways that we could walk through or go through in life. I mean, every day is all about making decisions. Isn't that true? Every single day we are faced with choices from the time that we wake up in the morning to the time that we go to bed at night, we are faced with decisions about which way to go. If you break this concept down in the most fundamental way, we have to make decisions continuously every minute about what we're gonna think about. Psychiatry tells us that most of people's thought processes are controlled by their unconscious mind. And a lot of times our mind wanders to focus on something negative and we're not even aware that our mind has drifted and is focusing on that negative thing. But the Bible says, you know, as a man thinketh, so he is. So it really begins with what we think in our mind and in our hearts. But we find that Paul here is asking the Father to direct his way. May the Lord direct our path. So I want to encourage you today, beloved one, to ask Father to direct you from directing you in being able to channel your thoughts in the right direction, to direct you by giving you the power to have self-awareness so you can see the light and choose correctly. David said of the Lord, in your light, there is light. And so for you to choose the right path, for you to be directed by the Lord, it involves being able to see correctly, to see light. But a lot of times, what we think is light is not really light at all. This is why it's important to ask the Lord to direct us. The Bible says, lean not on your own understanding, but rather acknowledge him in all your ways, and he shall direct your path. So it begins in the mind and in the heart. We ask the Father, Lord, help me to take possession of myself, that I would direct myself by your grace 
in the right direction. Sometimes people are spending so much time focusing on the evils that have been committed against them, the sins that have been forgiven, and they're just focusing on this person slighted them and this person did that to them and they get consumed by it. We need to ask the Lord to direct our paths because going down that pathway is not going to lead us into light. It's going to lead us into destruction. I mean, think about what I'm saying here. I'm breaking down a concept. Paul is saying, Lord, I hope that you'll direct my path to these saints at Thessalonica. I'm bringing it way back and I'm taking it into a much more general framework by saying, think about it. Paul was asking the Lord to direct his path. You and I, therefore, have a model that we can ask the Lord to direct our paths And the beginning of our path being directed starts in the choices that we make, the pathway that we take as it relates to our thought life. Because as a man thinketh, so he is. So we want to ask God for grace that we'll take the path in our thought life that leads to life, that we'll think about things that will produce love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, self-control, and all those things that are the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It begins, beloved, in the mind. And as a man thinketh, so he is. So, Father, I ask for grace right now as we're taking this big, broad subject, just recognizing, Daddy, that we can ask you for help, that we're not left to do this all on our own, that we need your help, and we can ask you for help. Father, I ask you right now, For everyone that's listening, everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord, Father, we're asking you for help. Daddy, we need your help to control our thoughts. Father, to direct our thoughts towards those types of thoughts that lead to life, that we can manifest your presence and your goodness, and that we can live in divine happiness. Father, we ask you to wake us up. I know that oftentimes we're not even aware of our thoughts. Our thoughts are meandering left and right, backward and forward, and we're dwelling on negative things, and we don't even realize that we are. Father, we ask you to wake us up and direct our path so that we'll walk towards those things that produce life in Jesus' name. I remember, beloved, years ago, in an experience, a vision of the night, I was laying in bed in a little room I call the rabbi's quarters, in the facility where I was shepherding a congregation. And in this vision of the night, I was in this house and there were like demons behind me. I couldn't see the demons' physical shape. I could just see that they were there and they were driving me, they were oppressing me, they were causing me torment. And I was trying to run away from the demons. They were behind me, pressing down on me, and I was trying to run away from them in this house. And I ran into this room in the home and the tormentors followed me there. And then I ran into another room in the home and the demons followed me there. Then I ran into another room in the home and the tormentors still were behind me. I couldn't escape them. Then all of a sudden, I felt a beam of light from heaven. I felt the gaze of the Lord fall upon me. Suddenly I became aware that the Lord was looking upon me from heaven and he showed me that there was somebody in my life that I had ill will towards. And the Lord spoke to me in this vision of the night and he said to me, release them. And right then and there, I made a decision to release this person that I had unforgiveness and ill will towards and immediately those demons, those tormentors left. What happened? The Lord directed my path. He directed my heart. He directed my mind. And when he did, and I came into agreement with his light, the tormentors left. And so, Father, again, we thank you for being our Savior through Messiah Jesus. Father, thank you that we don't have to do anything alone. You said it's not by might or by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. So, Daddy, we humbly submit ourselves to you, ask you to pour forth your help into our life that our paths would be directed towards life and godliness. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus with Rabbi Schneider. We want you to know there are so many ways that you can watch and listen to Rabbi's programs. 
Online, you'll find us at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. You can find resources like our television broadcast schedule, rabbi's messages on your podcasting platform, YouTube content, devotionals, and much more. You can even follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Check out all these resources online today. When you give to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, it allows us to spend more time focusing on what really matters. And for us, that means getting God's word out to as many people as possible. And right now, at this very moment, there is someone who needs to hear Rabbi's practical biblical teaching. And your financial gift is what makes that possible. To donate, go online to discoveringthejewishjesus.com. Now to conclude today's message, here's Rabbi Schneider. And then Paul continues in the 12th verse, he says, and may the Lord cause you to increase and abound in love for one another. So we're going to focus on these three words, increase, abound in love, and it's all directed towards loving one another. But I love the concept even of the fact that we've been called to a life of increase through the God who always wants to be more for us. Aren't you glad that even if you're 65 years old, 75 years old, 85, 95, or even 105 years old, but aren't you glad that regardless of how old you are, God's got more for you. It's completely opposite from the world. In the world, it's like once you reach 40 years old, people tell you, oh, your best days are behind you now. You know, once you're 50 years old, oh, you're, you're a has-been. But remember, Jesus, his first miracle was turning the water to wine, and it was at a wedding, and the guests there had already drunken all the wine that the host had served, and they had run out. So Jesus then blesses the water, he turns the water into wine. The guests drink the wine that Jesus created and they're astounded, they said, gosh, is this good? Usually at a wedding, they serve the good wine first. And then once everyone's drunk and freely of the good wine, they can't tell the difference between the good wine and the bad wine anymore, then they serve the bad wine. But you, they said to those, save the good wine till last. And I believe it's a picturable of it, of the fact that in Jesus, the best is at the end. The best is last. And so God is a God of increase. So Paul begins here by speaking about this God of increase. May you increase. I want you to know, beloved, there's still purpose for you. I don't care how old you are. There are still things for you to enter into in the Lord that are greater than anything you've ever entered into before. You have to believe that. David said, if I didn't believe that I could experience the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, I'd have no hope. In other words, David, the king of Israel, David Melech, he had an expectation that he was going to experience God's goodness in his life. And the same is true for you and me. God is a God of increase. We're on, the Bible calls, an upward call. Paul says he forgets what lies behind and he presses on towards what now? The upward call of God in Christ Jesus. There's more for you. God's a God of increase. Then Paul continues here, that the Lord caused you to increase and abound in love for one another. And then he even continues and says, and for all people. And so we have to understand that we're called, beloved ones, to work out our salvation in fear and trembling. The scripture says, work out your salvation in fear and trembling. In other words, we need to be self-introspective. We need to examine ourselves to see the condition of our soul, to examine the way that we walk. And one of the things that we need to be highly cognitive of, to be aware of, is are we treating people with love? Are we growing in love? This is what Paul's benediction is, that God is blessing you. He's a God of increase. And his blessing over you is that you would increase in love for his people and even for all people. And so we need to be pressing in to become more and more loving. 
Now, when I say more and more loving, I'm not talking about, you know, touchy-feely, whimsical. I'm talking about initiating acts of love and service. In other words, one of the ways that we love people is through expression, communication. We take the time to call somebody on the phone just to tell them, I was thinking about you. I love you. When somebody does a good job, we bless them. You know what you did? It really blessed me. What you said, it really encouraged me. If we see that somebody needs help with something, we step alongside them to help them, to lift them up. If we see somebody that's discouraged, we pray for them, we lay hands on them. In other words, to abound in love, here's the key, takes action. If we're going to abound in love, if we're going to increase in love, that means we're going to become more and more active in connecting with other people, not waiting for them to connect with us. That's not love. Did you ever hear the expression, if you want to have friends, be a friend to somebody? In other words, if we're going to abound in love, that means we're going to be the ones that are reaching out, initiating, and doing things for people to bless them. And it could be in a million different ways. But I want to ask you, have you become self-activated by the Ruach HaKodesh to be somebody that is in the world loving people? If you're just sticking to yourself in your own little castle, your own four walls, that's not love. Loving is communicating. When the Spirit of God fell on those first believers in Acts chapter 2, He fell on them, listen now, beloved ones, as a tongue of fire. Why did the Holy Spirit come to the church as a tongue? A tongue is a speaking oracle. A tongue speaks. Loving people involves speaking into their lives. And so I want to encourage us to understand that the blessing over our lives, the blessing that God is pronouncing on us, is that we would increase and abound in love for one another and for all people. And this means that we have to be people of initiation. We have to be initiative people. We have to be active people. We have to be in action to love people. We can't just build a fortress around our lives, going to work, in a little wall around themselves, not doing anything to love anybody, just taking care of themselves. But beloved, this is not the life of the Lord Jesus who came into the world to seek and save the lost. It's not the heart of the Father who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I want to encourage you and I today to be more initiative in loving people, going out of our way, even if it's uncomfortable, to bless people, to smile at them, to say hello. You sit on an airplane and you say hello to the person next to you. They look at you like they're mad. Like, how could you invade my space and say hello to me on the airplane? Leave me alone. It's crazy. It's a crazy world, but we are lights in the darkness. We are lights shining in the earth. We cannot let the devil stop us. We cannot let hate stop us. Even if we're being misunderstood, beloved, let's love. And as my wife, Cynthia always says, and let's love well. May he establish your hearts without blame and holiness before our God and Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. And so Paul is declaring the blessing over us that our hearts would be established in holiness and that we'd be ready to receive the Lord Jesus who is coming soon and quickly. Amen and amen. You're listening to the authentic, straightforward, and uncompromising truth of God's Word right here on Discovering the Jewish Jesus. Our Bible teacher is Rabbi Schneider, and we've been learning how to increase in God's love today. And if you'd like to learn more about this ministry, or if you'd like to hear any of the other messages from our biblical benedictions that you may have missed, please visit us online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. You know, one of the coolest things about Scripture is that 
it is living and active, and God reveals things to us little by little in His perfect timing. And that's really what these daily Bible studies are all about. We desire to help you grow in your walk of faith and your journey of discovering the Jewish Jesus. And if you don't know about Jesus, or if you haven't accepted Him as your personal Savior, but you'd like to, then please connect with us online. You'll find us at Discovering the Jewish Jesus. Jesus.com. And when you make that commitment, we want to hear from you because we have a couple of resources that we'd like to send you for free as our way of saying welcome to the family. We can offer these resources and this daily program because of the faithful support from friends like you. And to share a little bit more about that, let's hear from Rabbi once again. Part of the scriptural narrative we've been studying is that when David got breakthrough, he destroyed the idols of the Philistines. You and I also must destroy idols around our lives that keep us from entering into God's fullness. For you and I, the idol that we may be struggling with is clinging to our finances for security rather than the Lord. The Lord has called us to honor Him first with our finances, but unfortunately, too many of us are in fear and we're not honoring the Lord properly with our finances. And as a result, beloved, it's hindering us in getting breakthrough. If discovering the Jewish Jesus is being used of the Lord to strengthen you and encourage you in your walk and fellowship with Him, and you're not fully honoring the Lord with your finances, I want to encourage you today to take a step of faith for your breakthrough, submit your finances to Him, and honor Him with your finances through discovering the Jewish Jesus today. To give a financial gift today, all you have to do is go online to discoveringthejewishjesus.com or give a donation when you call 800-777-7835. You can also give a gift of any amount by mail when you write to us at Discovering the Jewish Jesus, P.O. Box 777, Blissfield, Michigan 49228. That's P.O. Box 777, Blissfield, Michigan. Michigan 49228. And as our way of saying thank you for your financial gift, we'll send you Rabbi Schneider's message of the month that's available as a download. And we'll also send you our current newsletter. And it's filled with the latest testimonies, ministry updates, including our plans to resume our international outreaches this year in places like Africa. We've got three different outreaches coming up in the the next six months. And you can also stay up to date with our latest social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Find us at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. And now to wrap up today's message on biblical benedictions with a special blessing, here is Rabbi Schneider. The words from the ironic blessing in the book of Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27, helps us to realize how good God is to you and I personally. So receive his blessing into your life, and then, beloved one, go bless somebody else in Jesus' name today. Yavah Yahweh Panavelecha Vihunecha Isa Yahweh Panavelecha Veasem Lecha Shalom bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up with his countenance and the Lord give you, beloved one, his peace. God bless you and shalom.
I'm Dustin Roberts, and Discovering the Jewish Jesus is a production of Shalom Ministries. Join us again tomorrow when Rabbi Schneider concludes this study of biblical benedictions from the New Testament. That's coming up Friday on Discovering the Jewish Jesus. <laughs>